Hello there. Hello there, everyone. Oh, welcome to Making It With Mary. I am here in the bunkhouse. I have finally somewhat cleared that kitchen area from last night. Uh, it took me all night, all night long working on it. Tonight, I have to tackle my toolbox. Uh, there's tons of tools. Everybody uses the tools, so I don't even know what I got in here. That's part of the problem. People will come and ask me all the time. Uh, the guys will come in and say, hey, where's the... I have no clue. <laughs> Oftentimes, I do know where they are, so... Uh, but you're going to help me organize these tools tonight, and we're going to play a little game. Yes. So... We're going to play a game. I'm going to hold up the tool. <laughs> if I know what it is, great. If not, then I want you guys to put it in the comments. We're going to see how much... Uh, I've got all sorts of different tools. So uh, we're going to see how much tools you know. How many tools have you used? Now, I use a lot of tools. But there's some wonky and crazy things in... Uh, here, I've got a whole wall. If you can see behind me, the tools go all the way down behind me. So I've got tools everywhere. And my task is to organize all those tools so that when somebody says, hey, where's the skill saw? I know exactly where it is. Or where's the chop saw? Or where's the reciprocating saw? Or I need a 16 ounce hammer, or I need a 12 ounce hammer, whatever it is. I gotta know where those things are. So again, thank you so much for joining me. You've got Mary live. It is a beautiful day here in Alabama. It didn't start off great. Uh, it was all sorts of rainy and, and overcast, but it, it cleared up and it's absolutely beautiful out now. So again, thank you guys for joining me here tonight uh, as we uh, get going with, <laughs> with figuring out what my tools are. Now I do have a big box. I wasn't kidding. It's a big Amazon box, but I have a big box here that I'm going to try and organize some of these tools into. I have smaller boxes too. So I try to put like the electrical stuff together, the plumbing stuff together. So at least when we're working on something, I can go to kind of the right area. Anyway, so, but I'm going to start out with big tools. So put the big tools in the box. Put the bunny back in the box. Anybody know what movie that's from? <laughs> Thanks for joining me tonight. <laughs> Where in Alabama am I? I am in the southeast section of Alabama. I am south of Montgomery. So, I don't like to tell you exactly where I am. <laughs> Can't tell you exactly where I am. So, uh, <laughs> Rubbermaid boxes do do really well for organizing. You are correct. And I do have some Rubbermaid boxes. I use those for screws a lot and for uh, for nails and screws when we got leftover ones. So that ends up going in there. Sometimes I have mason jars. Sometimes that stuff goes in there. Uh, like, okay, so here, here's one of my new DeWalt's. Can anyone tell me what tool this is? Huh? Don't have a good look at it? <laughs> Can anybody tell me what tool I've got in my hand? Come on. Now, it usually has battery on the bottom because this is uh, a lot of my tools now are cordless. I've had them so that they've been corded and cordless. It is a power tool, not a manual tool. Yes, you have to pull the trigger. But come on, what do you what do you got? Yes, <laughs> someone says it's a nail gun. Yes, it is, but specifically, this is a finishing, so a finishing nail gun, so specifically there. Yes, so ding, 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 we have a winner. <laughs> it 
It is a nail gun. Now I've used it with an air compressor. This is an 18 gauge uh, air gun, so a uh, nail gun. The uh, I've used them with the air compressors on it as well. So those ones are, you know, I, it takes a little getting used to with the battery because there's like a and then it goes as opposed to the the one with the air compressor just goes, you know. So it does have a different trigger action for it. All right, so this one is going in the big box. Here we go. All right, so um, now I've switched over a lot from Cobalt to DeWalt, or DeWalt, depending. If you're in Alabama, everybody says DeWalt. Uh, I always call it DeWalt. I don't call it McDonald's, I call it McDonald's. Anyways. Um, just, I guess, where you are in the world. This one is a DeWalt also, and I have a six-hour battery on here. Uh, if you know anything about what's going on here, uh, I recently had the interior painted. Well, I came back to a layer of, a, probably like an inch thick layer of dust. So I have been using this quite frequently. Uh, handy dandy. It's it, I like it a lot. It's the the um, the actual the actual uh, the vacuum thing, and it, it sucks really well. <laughs> it does suck out really well. So oh, it's got a little light on it. See, it's got its headlights on. <laughs> I like when it has its headlights on, don't you? You like Milwaukee? I can't argue with you there. Yes, I do like the Milwaukee tools too. And I do have a rep that keeps trying to get me to switch. One of my, um, one of my electronical, or electronic, electric, geez, electric reps. He keeps trying to get me to switch over to the, the Milwaukee brand. He's trying. Oh, so I do have some Milwaukee, but it's not, they're not power tools. These are hand tools but I do have a set of these. So I've got three of them, not just one. I got three Milwaukee's. So can anybody tell me what this hand tool is? Because this is not power, this is a manual. So what do I have now? Come on, come on. I got a left, right, center. on you can tell me yes all right uh play play way okay <laughs> i missed the middle part there a uh, tin snips so here are some tin snips i use these a lot when we have the uh, i've been using them on the galloon so uh if you've been following me you know that the uh, part of what i've been doing is updating things and renovating things here at the farm, including the roof on the bunkhouse is a red galvalume. And all the roofs on the animals' shelters are now galvalume as well. So is the pole barn. Pole barn is galvalume red. Uh, the uh, utility shed is not red. It is just galvalume like the rest of the lean-tos. So my lean-tos are going to be uh, just the Galvalume, 29 gauge, I believe, on that. And then the, uh, the structures, the, the houses, the main farmhouse, the bunkhouse, and my new shed, my workout shed, are all in a red uh, Galvalume. Okay, so um, I'm not sure I'm going to put these in the box. Just wanted to let everybody know, since I'm live, you know that you've got the real Mary Buck. Because what happens a lot of times is I get copied. <laughs> Go figure, right? <laughs> but you've got me, it's live, you know that you've got the real Mary Buck. These, this is the account to follow. So follow me here, right? Don't follow the fakes. Follow me, the real Mary Buck, all right? 
And if you have any questions where you can find me and what my real accounts are, oh, thank you for the hearts. Um, and the hearts, I got lots of hearts. If you don't know where to find me, check my profile. It'll tell you in my bio. So, yeah, that's that. <laughs> All right, let's, shall we grab another tool? Let's go grab another tool. What tool? Oh, ha. another hand tool. What is it? What is it? Can you tell me? It has a hook on this side and it has a hook on this side. It's awfully flat. It's hard metal. You can bang it all you want. It's not going to bend. What is it? Come on, guys. Tell me what the tool is. I'll give you a hint. You use it on the floor. So, I don't have the rubber mallet that I would normally use with it, but you yeah, bang it. <laughs> so, whichever way. <laughs> I was holding it up to the Oh, wow. So, what can you do with it? It's four floors, correct. You got that correct. It is four floors. And we used it installing the floor that I am now kneeling on, by the way. <laughs> uh, you got me down low tonight. I am using a knee pad. Yes, you gotta save those knees, right? <laughs> I was gonna sit up in the chair, but then I thought I'd be leaning over. I mean, really leaning over the whole time. It would make it uncomfortable. So I wanted to get down with you and do that and get down with the tools. All right, anybody know? Come on. What's it called? I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking for the answers. Someone's got to tell me. Uh, no, it's not to remove tile, although you could, I, I could see in some applications you might be able to, if you needed to get, say, behind some uh, baseboard and pull a baseboard away, you might be able to use it. Uh, you definitely could use it to break a tile, but that's not really what it's for. So, uh, so anybody tell me what it, what's it for? Come on, come on. So, how about this? It's called a kicker. <laughs> At least that's what I've always called it, is a kicker. So it's when you're installing the floor and you have a gap that you really don't, you don't want gaps in your, because it clicks in. So on these types of boards here, you'll see that it has an edge and an edge here. So this is your flush. So it'll go up against a wall here, because I it's already been cut. <laughs> so this is the part that would go up against the wall. And then you have to tongue and groove it in and snap it in. But even still, and then you lay your next piece on top of that. But sometimes you have a little bit too much room, so you want to kick it into place. And the way that you do that is with your kicker. I also sometimes, I'm like, is it a spreader or a kicker? No, it's a, called a kicker. At least that's what I've been told. It's called a kicker. So, kicker. Okay, i got to do like hand tools and power tools. Anyway, so there we go. So thank you for joining me. We've got Mary live and we're playing in the fruit box. <laughs> it's actually a tool wall tonight. I am trying to organize the tools. So when the workers come in, when they ask me where it is, it was all higgledy piggledy. So now I'm fixing it so that we, when they say, where's the blank? I can know exactly where it is, unless I don't know what the total tool is. And that has happened, because they come in and they say, I need the two-handed dually clincher. And I'm like, oh, okay, whatever that is. <laughs> Tell me the application, and then I'll be able to find the tool. So, for instance, here's a, here's a funky tool. Here. <laughs> does anybody know what that does? And you ratchet it, 
But what does it do? Hmm? 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 What does it do? What does it do? What do we got? What is it? And then when you get it to the right thing, it snaps. What do we got? <laughs> Correct. Somebody says it cuts PVC. So yes, pipe. Yes. So when I'm doing plumbing and we're, we're <laughs> you got a big pipe and you got to cut it, you're not going to use... You're not going to reuse a reciprocating on it. Although I have. <laughs> There's been a time or two where I've had to use it. But really what you want to use is something with a sharp edge, uh, a sharp blade on it, and ratchet it down and try to get it through in a smooth. You want to score it and then cut it in one thing evenly. Don't do it like I just did it there. When you're grabbing it, do it. You want to do it even. So it cuts evenly. Because if you end up with those burrs, you gotta sand the burr out of it. Just, you can take a little bit of that big burr down too. And you can, can just smooth off that little burr. Because if you have those burrs, you won't get a tight seal. And you want a tight seal. Everybody wants a tight seal. So uh, when you get through that tight seal, whether you're cement or for, you know, even just cleaning it, you want it nice. And clean and clear. I'm trying to get it to lock and for some reason it's not snapping over the rim. Come on, I want to lock it but it's not going to go. It's not going to go for me. Ah, there, because I was I was squeezing it too, I was squeezing it too hard. See, I could get you, I've got lots of extra pieces of pipe. Let's see, okay, do I have a good piece of pipe? bad piece of pipe. Let's see what I got here. Nope. <laughs> that's a that's a Okay, that's a valve. We don't need the valve. That's an elbow. That's not gonna work so well. And that one's not open. I don't want to open something. These are itty bitty elbows. Itty bitty elbows. That's a bigger elbow. It's more of a 45. That's not really. That's a 45 turn on it, not a 90. So, uh, as you can see, I have lots of pipe. <laughs> and lots of curved pipe. Right now I'm working on curves <laughs> and T's. So in here I have T's and straights. Oh, I think they're all T's. Oh, I thought I had straights in there. They're just, they're all T's. So, T's, elbows, more elbows. If I come across a piece of pipe, I'll go back to that tool and I'll show you. Oh, and it popped off. It won't stay locked on me. Let's try that valve again. There. Okay. So there's some pipe. All right. Since I showed this before, what tool now am I holding? Hmm? <laughs> come on. What tool do I got now? It is also a cordless because it doesn't have its powered batteries. I do have my chargers back here, big, big battery chargers back here, ready to go. Charge, charge them up every night so we're ready in the morning. Okay, what do I got? What is it? Oh, I'm trying to read the, the comments now. Let's see. What do I got? Besides looking like Charlie's Angels. <laughs> what do I got? You can tell me. Come on. <laughs> a sawzall. Nope. Not a sawzall. <laughs> How was it a sawzall? <laughs> mm. Oh, well, I guess you could, I guess you could technically, uh, the brand, the brand is Sawzall. There, there is a brand Sawzall. I call it a reciprocating, but, um, um, so yes. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know how to pronounce that. It's, 
There's also a K-L-E. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Anyways, so sawzall, sawzall, uh, reciprocating saw. Okay, putting that in the box. It's going in the big box. Now over here, oh. <laughs> All right, now I've got, let's see, i got little things. This is chalk. Do we know why we use the chalk? And it goes here. Come on, you know the tools. What's this tool? Thanks for joining in. We got Mary live. And I'm playing with my toolbox, trying to organize my tools and put them all, all together. Yep. Come on. Come on. There's blue chalk in here. I have to hold the tip because if I shake it. And it has a little spot somewhere in here. Yep. You pour, you pull back the side and then you pour. And then you pour your chalk in here. Oh. It doesn't want to come out. <laughs> My chalk is shy. It doesn't want to come out. Oh, yeah. Now it wants to come out. Now it wants to come out. Anyways. What do we got? Come on. Put your, put your answer in the comments. What is it? What tool is it? Hmm? Come on. I have to do it so there we go. <laughs> it wasn't good enough. <laughs> but what is it guys? Come on. Chalk line! Yay! We got chalk line. Congratulations. You got it. <gasps> there we go. There's a chalk line with extra chalk. Yes, we, I do this a lot. And actually, I'll probably do, be using this when uh, we put the deck on the new workout shed. The workout shed is 12 by 24, and I'm going to match it with a deck on the outside that is also going to be 12 by 24. So if it's nice out, I can be outside working out. And if it's not, I can go inside and work out. Or we can have people in both locations. So if I want to do yoga, I don't have to be inside the building. I can go do some yoga outside. Whereas people that want to go and, uh, out on the property that want to go lift weights can go in and lift weights from the inside. So that's my brand new project. The shed's been delivered and I'm so excited to get started on it. So you can follow me start to finish. Another reason I need to organize all these tools. So when I say, where's the chalk line? <laughs> All right, because I get, a lot of times they'll ask me to snap the line or they'll ask me to mark the wood. Uh, they'll give me the measurements and I mark it. So if you've been following me for a long time, you know that those are some TikToks and Instagram reels that I have put out there in the past because uh, measuring, the, uh, digging a hole for the bunny hut, using like Alabama clay is awful to dig a hole. <laughs> awful <laughs> to dig a hole so and I was doing it using a post hole digger so yeah that took quite a, a while to do and I ended up being six inches short so I put my measuring tape down in the hole and found out I was six inches short had to dig it down another six inches so thanks for joining me you've got Mary live I'm playing in my toolbox I am trying oh now I get now I get, somebody said pour the chalk. Now I get chalk everywhere. And I just cleaned this area. Okay, so I got hand tools in one section. Huh. <laughs> Everybody should know what that is. <laughs> and why would I have this as a tool? Anyone? Anyone? Why would I have this as a tool? Why would I have a hair dryer as a tool? No, not to blow dry my hair. 
<laughs> Although I could just, you know, blow dry my hair. I would, that's, that, that works. But ooh, why would I have a hair dryer as a tool? <laughs> Come on. Dry caulking. Okay, yes, you could, I suppose you could if you were trying to dry caulking faster. Um, oftentimes, if you have a laminate floor that's down, that has uh, the stick that has the glue underneath it, you can heat it up to pull it back. It is also a handy for painters. So yes, the painters use the, uh, the this this uh, hair dryer. So that's why I have it. <laughs> you, it it's the it's also used. When you're working on the walls, if you have a larger area or a thicker area of your joint compound and you want to go quicker than what it would, because joint compound takes an awful long time. It's like watching paint dry. It's worse than watching paint dry. <laughs> it's way worse. So it takes forever. It takes like 24 hours for it to dry. Well, you want it to dry quicker? Use the hair dryer. Tip of the day. Okay, and speaking of which, I think I have, oh, this is floor patch. Ooh, I'm not even going to look that out. <laughs> okay, I got a whole pack of these. Somebody tell me what they are, and why do I need them? Hmm? Not to play the drums, not to put my hair up. Not to say pick a card, any card, <laughs> but why would I have these? Come on. I know it's not, it's not technically a tool, but it is used as part of a construction project. So what are they? Come on. Shims. Yes, I got it. Shims. And when you're trying to level something, or you're putting a uh, baseboard or trim or new windows when you're putting in new windows as I have put uh, as I have done here my windows have all been replaced in 90% of the bunkhouse so these shims certainly came in handy I replaced not only my front door but my back door so both doors had to be shimmed because, and boy, doors are so damn tricky because it, when it sticks, it's never where it sticks. So it's always the opposite angle. So if you think it's sticking top right, you actually have to adjust bottom left to fix your top right. It's because you're dealing with a rectangle, so you're always trying to, and making sure that it's flush, and making sure that it doesn't have too much of a pitch one way or another way, and that it's shimmed in there. So, yeah, so you have, you have a, a thick section of the shim and a thin section of the shim, and you have to marry them, break them off where needed, shove extra ones in there. You're just shimming it. <laughs> I actually used it to help level my cabinets and even my, it might have, well, it's on either side of the, the stove that I have over there. So yes, so when we were leveling the actual hickory cabinets that you see in the bunkhouse, not, uh, not, my, um, not my island, but the uh, cabinets, those are all used for that. Oh, I have a whole bunch of cedar trim going in that is going to help cover all those shims. <laughs> but I gotta get, gotta get there. So that's another project. So that's why I have also not done away with these shims because I want the everything to be flush. So hanging in there. I still have windows to go to. I still have one sliding door. Three windows to go with. Yeah, so keeping the machines handy. All righty, let's. Uh, what is this? It's used here often on the farm. 
or what I use it for anyways. It's actually more for farming than it is for, but it comes in handy when I need to tie something up or over. So, anyone know? All my farming people out there, what do I got? Hmm? What do I have here? And why might I have it? I actually don't know why it's in there, but it's not, it's wire. It's rather thick, thick wire. Why might I have, what is it and why might I have it? Thanks for joining Mary Live. You've got me playing in my toolbox. <laughs> and I am trying to get things organized and put things where they belong each one of them so it's I use it on fence repairs so what what would you say it is come on come on you can take a guess <sighs> thank you for joining me you've got Mary live while I'm playing in my toolbox and I brought out something that I use to fix my fence with What do I got? And it's aluminum. Yeah, it is definitely aluminum. It's not for soldering or anything like that. I've always, I wonder if you could use it for that, but I've never thought about that part. But, uh, uh, all right. I use it to repair my fence. It's called a uh, bailing wire. So uh, that's what I call it is a bailing wire. So when I have a hole in the fence or uh, one of those U-hooks has broken away from uh, the fence and the T-post. Then I snip it with my tin snips. And then I twist it and tie it. So it's just to tie up my fence. I don't know why it's in my box of tools for uh, renovations. So that means the guys brought it in for something. Okay, more hand tools. So if you've been following me, you know that I've been renovating and this whole bunkhouse has had many pieces of drywall replaced. So I will use these. What are these? Come on. <laughs> Simple tool time. Anyone? Anyone? What tools are these? I get a little one and a big one. They're not the same size. Come on. <laughs> yes, it's for drywall. Yes. Uh, um, uh, sparkle knife. So uh, I, I just call them spatulas, but yes, uh, that knife uh, sounds very familiar. Uh, this one is probably, I haven't found my, um, where are, it's unlike me to not have it handy. My handy dandy tape measure. I use that everywhere. So this one is a six inch. Take a look. About six inches. Right there. Six inches. From base or from end to end. Okay. Then this one is going to be bigger, obviously. This one is 10 inches. 10 inches. So, again, from end to end, like that. 10 inches. Anybody know why I might have two different ones? I mean, you can use them, but I use a three, uh, for anybody that uh, cares to hear. <laughs> I, when I am dry walling and I'm doing the joint compound and I'm putting on that joint compound, um, I use, I, I put on a, use a small one to, to fill in the gap first and I let it dry. And then I move on to a bigger one to help feather the edge. 
that's how I that's how I learned how to do it. So I'm actually missing. I have a little red one. It's four inches. The little red one is right here. But so that's my that's that. All right. Do I have? Oh, here's a big one. What do I got there? That would be awfully painful. <laughs> but what is it? <gasps> what do I got now? What is this one? Playing a game. Come on. What am I doing? What is it? What do we got? Come on, now you should be able to tell me what it is. And if I put them on, they'd really hurt me. <laughs> Come on. Yes, a slide plant. You got it. There we go. We got a slide plant. So, when I was, um, I forget what the heck we needed it for. But I was putting together something and I had to uh, press together, oh, an end piece. I had to put an end piece on a cabinet and it had to stick. And so we glued it and then we put the clamp and then we had to cut and drill a hole so that we could miter, I could miter, I could uh, drill a hole into the corner. So there's a whole process to the whole thing. But yes, slide plant so that we could plant it all down. That does come in handy. Plants come in handy. We need to set it. All right. Let's see. Anyone? I'm picking out all the orange tools. I don't know why I'm picking out all the orange tools. Is it because I'm wearing orange? <laughs> what do we got now? Thanks for joining me. I am playing in my toolbox, trying to organize the tools for the guys uh, and for me for all the upcoming projects. They're all higgledy-piggledy all over the place, so I'm trying to put them together in a, in a manner that makes sense for everybody. So I'm asking you guys to help me out and figure out what this is and what it's used for. And you've got Mary Lab. Yes, this is the real Mary Burke. And I know there's a lot of copycats and fakes out there, but you got me live, so you know you got the real thing, real deal right here. So this is the account to follow, and follow me on my adventures here at the farm or while I'm traveling. And I forgot to look to see if somebody was telling me what this was. Come on, come on, come on, you can do it, you can do it. It does have a straight edge. <laughs> it's not what I call it, but it could, it's, um, it does give you a straight edge. Come on. Yes, a speed square. There you go. We got it. We got it. A square. And you can make any angle with your speed square. So when you line it up, you can whatever you need. You can and it's, you can maneuver it however you need to make that that angle. Uh, 
it is only, I don't know, seven inches long? Seven inches long. This is, yeah. I have a huge T-square one. But it is a huge T-square. That is, it was back there, but I think, I don't think it came back in from outside. It was behind my shelving. Here, hold on. So yes, back here, they do have a huge T-square, which again, this is, this is for smaller things. You could use this for bigger things. And when you're marking a big piece, like if you need to go long on a piece of wood, you can mark it on, on at different locations on that wood, match it up, draw your line, and then bring it over to cut. So it helps you give you a long, straight, straight edge there. So, but this is your, you can see why they call it a T-square, right? So we have the small speed square and the large T-square. Okay, I'm gonna put that back, because I knew where that was, so we can have it ready for the morning. All right. What do I got now? Ta -da 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 -da. What did I just pick up now? What tool is that? Come on, help me out. What tool we got now? Thanks for joining me while I arrange my tools in the toolbox. I don't have a toolbox, but I have a box that has this full of tools. So thank you so much for joining me. If you follow me, I appreciate you guys helping to make my videos go viral. If you don't, join me. It's a lot of fun. I'm always into something. And even when I'm not, I'm organizing like this. <laughs> it is a saw. You are correct. It does have a blade on it right down here. And it, that's the guard. <laughs> and it does take a battery, which is charging. So let me know what you think of that. Skill saw, correct. Thank you. <laughs> yes, this is called a skill saw, and uh, it's good for all different applications. But uh, it's, I tend to use it. Oh, circular. It because it is circular. The skill saw is known, also known because it is circular like that. Okay. So this is you know two by fours and and such. I have used it for going across uh, a T111 board, so you can run it once you, once you use that T-square in the back, <laughs> once you use that uh, T-square in the back and, and you have your line drawn out on the piece of wood that you want, you can line it up. Here, you want it to be lined up through your notch and you have to adjust where the blade is and then run it down the line. So, I usually don't do the cutting part, I usually do the marking part. <laughs> that's what, that's, that's what I get. Although sometimes I do. Uh, I've used the, like tile cutters, we use, uh, that's more like the uh, chop saws, but it's uh, the wet, the wet saw where you run the tile through and cut your tiles. Uh, or the chop saw where you have the big, you know, table and you run, run your wood through it that way. <laughs> I do like working with wood. I, I, it's, it's drawn to me. <laughs> or I'm drawn to it. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I'm always playing with wood. So. <laughs> All right, what other tools do I have? What tools do I have in, oh, well, here's one a very important it's not a tool, but it's an accessory. My belt. I have a little belt that I wear. Of course, it doesn't want to. Do I have it switched around? Oh, it's out. 
somehow the, the thing got switched, but that's okay. There. So there's my little tool belt. I got a little pouch there in the front. And things here, I, I always have something to mark with handy. So there, and then usually I hang my hammer. Where I don't have my S ring here. I don't know where my S ring is, but uh, so I'll have to look for that. Hope it didn't get grow legs and walk off. I love my S ring. <laughs> All right, so there I got my hammer, and in here, <laughs> which is funny because in here isn't nails. I have screws. <laughs> so I need my drill gun for that, which we haven't come across the drill gun yet. All right. But, let's see, that was stuck. And now I've got, oh, this is a sad looking bit box. That's a sad looking bit box. There's not many, there's not many drill bits in the, <laughs> in the bit box. So, oh, I have something on my shirt. <laughs> Oopsies. <laughs> Told you there's a lot of dirt and dust around here. <laughs> and, Apparently some dust bunnies. So uh, I am only left with the bigger bits and some tiny bits. But the main bits, the, the most common bits, have all been used. <laughs> so I got little bits and I got big bits, but not the, but I don't have the, uh, the most common bits here. All right, so that. I try to put all the bits together. Let's see what's in this one. I got a double one here. And the same thing. Oh, see, that's a much better. See, that is more what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> the other one was a little pathetic. A little, and it was, it, I was almost out of uh, drill bits. <laughs> all right, so here I have most of my bits. I'm only missing three. Okay. That's a little bit better. I'm going to put that in the box with the, the tools. Here's another. So I also oftentimes will see me with, if they see me with my, uh, uh, with my tool belt on there, that uh, I will be also be having my measuring tape. I always carry a measuring tape. Uh, I, even, even when I go to the grocery store, <laughs> in my purse, I always have like a little mini three-foot one. You never know. You never know when you need to measure something. I'm just telling you guys. You never know when you need to measure something. I went to a, a hotel and I liked their their bathroom. So people thought I was crazy because I was in there and I was measuring. I'm like, okay, three feet. This is only three feet, but I got to move over here and I got to add another three. So I was using my three foot measuring tape to get the dimensions of the shower that I liked <laughs> because it wasn't a, a regular uh, square. Uh, shower either or a rectangular shower it had all sorts of funky angles to it and it actually kind of like a trapezoid out yeah, and it was really cool so I, I liked that design and so yes I am always carrying my measuring tape because like I said you never know when you have to measure something and you don't want to be caught without having something to measure what am I going to use my hand use my hand, which I happen to know is about five and a half inches long, right? I don't think my hand's grown, but from the, the palm of my hand to the tip of my middle finger, there, is six inches. So, I thought it was five and a half, it's six. Huh. Sorry if I underestimated you. <laughs> But thank you uh, for, for joining me. You've got Mary live. I am going through my tool, uh, tool box. And I have, um, I, I have something here. I have always, always, always been able to find studs all on my own. That there's never needed, uh, um, you know, uh, a stud finder. So, but... The guys came in and asked where my stud finder was, and I'm like, I'm right here. <laughs> what, what, where, what, what stud do you, do you need to find? 
mind. So then when they found out that I didn't have a stud finder, they went and bought me my own stud finder. And as you can see, it's still in the wrapper. I don't need a stud finder. <laughs> so it's going in the box. Yes, but they got me a zircon. Interesting one. What do I got? What do I got? Uh, it's a probe. Let me probe you. <laughs> I am not going to probe you. A digital thermometer? No, this is not a digital thermometer. <laughs> uh, come on. What what tool is this? I'm doing tool time. Come on. A meter battery tester. Yes, it <laughs> it is. It is. Um, it is well used. I use, uh, there's lots of uh, outlets and batteries and all sorts of stuff, electrical things. Lots of electrical uh, components happening here in the bunkhouse, in the pole barn, and in the, sh the shed that's going in the workout shed. So this comes in quite handy when I need to uh, test voltage. I want to see if there's juice in it. Yes, we're checking the juice and how much juice is going through it. So for instance, I found out I was having trouble with the air conditioner and I couldn't figure out why the circuit kept flipping on the air conditioner because I had a new air conditioner installed and it shouldn't be flipping the breaker. Well, Turns out that the the um, the AC was putting out 73 amps of electric uh, voltage or amps. Anyways, I don't get all that. I don't get all the the technical technical stuff. But it was on a 60 breaker. So, and you're only supposed to use about I believe it's 80 percent of that 60. So you can tell that I was already way over on that ampage. So either one of two things, uh, you either need to up the breaker, which is very hard to get higher than a 60 uh, breaker. Not hard, but it's not, you can't just run into lows and get a 100 amp breaker that fits your, your, your stuff. Um, or you have the opportunity to uh, run a better wire to it <laughs> than that's well, I mean, we needed a thicker gauge wire and the thick the, and oddly with wire the thicker it is the lower the number not the higher the number usually when things are big and thick you know it's it, it's a big number no not not in this case it goes down so you have a 12 I don't think I have any electric wire in here uh, but your Romex the yellow wire it's usually a 12-2 uh, gauge it could be 14 but it's a, it's a pretty thin wire that they that they run so uh, but when we've been running stuff underground here uh, we've been using some stuff that is honking thick <laughs> it's some of the thickest um, wire I have seen and that is, uh, it's in six gauge. And it's six three, but it actually has four wires in it because you always have to have a neutral. So, um, so you have your, your, your thing is four wires. And it's usually banded and it's each one of them is a, is it, each one of them is a thick wire in of itself. And then it's in a large, uh, a, a large casing. Anyhow, um, the new 
neutral also equals ground since you're ground wire. So you have um, so if you trip something, it's you're gonna ground it out. It'll flip the breaker or sh uh, you have your GFI go off or something like that. But you you know you're not gonna fry your or uh, cause your panel to burn. So that's what that that's the the whole point of the exercise in having that neutral in there is that any surplus will go into that into that neutral or ground and disperse that surge so that you don't uh, explode <laughs> everything in the, you don't fry your your uh, rep your um, TV and your computer you know you you've seen it happen when in, that's why you have a power surge protector on a lot of your stuff too because you plug your your TV into the outlet and there's lightning that strikes and you or, or you get a power surge then what happens is that extra current comes through that wire and actually zaps it off <laughs> so, and then you have no TV and that really sucks when it's a Super Bowl Sunday and you get up and your TV's fried so anyways <laughs> or whatever sport you watch uh, if you're watching soccer or football or or any, anything like that. It really, it can, it can mess you up. Anyway. All right, so on to more tools. Oh, uh, while I was, we did a lot of subfloor work and a lot of work around the uh, uh, subfloor and around the uh, foundation of the bunkhouse. And little did I know that I had bees in the wall. <laughs> So now I have Boston Hornet spray for wherever, uh, for wherever I go. And me and bees do not get along. I thought I would have, at one point I thought I would have maybe like honeybees here. Not, not, not gonna happen. Okay, the belt is going in the box. Let's see. And people always ask me about safety. I am all about safety. So I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six <laughs> different pairs of safety gloves, depending on the application and what it's needed for. So yes. The, the sad part of that is with all of these here, they're not where I need them when I need them. Because I will go grab a pair uh, and walk out of the house, put it in the, the side by, the can and side by, and go somewhere, get out, uh, walk uh, to a different section of the property, and realize that I either I left them back at the house or I left them in the can am and I didn't bring them with me. So uh, I also have a pair in the Jeep. I have a pair, I actually even have a pair in the Jaguar. Yep, because it's happened. <laughs> I, but then I wear them back and bring them back to the bunkhouse and this happens. I get like six, six pairs all in the same place and not dispersed where they need to be. So yes. All right. Oh, this one's a fun one. <laughs> Gaps and crack filler. So you need your crack filled. Here's the filler for you. <laughs> Got a big crack? There you go. And it comes with a tiny little tube that you blow it, you know, you aerosol it through. So, um, here we have, oh, this is more for the uh, walls. Here we have some tape. There we go, we got some tape. Tape Mary up, right? <laughs> Just kidding, guys. I wouldn't do that. Okay, but now that's no good. Because once I've done that, it's not gonna be sticky. This stuff all has a little sticky stuff on it. It's not very sticky. But this is to go over your seams in the, there we go, go over the seams I will cut that later and put it away. 
uh, that goes over your uh, seams when you're doing your jo joint compound for your walls, mudding, and uh, drywalling. Oh, why was that one? I should have asked you what it was, what kind of tape, but I told you ahead of time. All right, this time I won't. Now what do we got? Usually this could be, oh, I hear coyotes up there. You hear that? I think that was a coyote. Anyways, that, it has holes in it. This is plastic. Sometimes it's metal. I guess it depends on what you're doing with it. And no, it's not to wrap me up, not to tie me up. What is it? Thanks, you got Mary alive and I'm going through my toolbox and coming up with all sorts of nifty gadgets and tools and things to help with your construction. So yeah, you forgot what it is, <laughs> but you know. What do you put in there? And what do you do with it? What do you put in there? You put something in there. Come on, you know what it is. Somebody tell me. What do we do with it? It's not a whip. <laughs> it's not a bra. Come on, you can tell me. It's above your pay grade? No, it's not above your pay grade. Come on, you can tell me what it is. All right, I can tell you, it's a strapping. Um, I use this one, it is uh, plastic, so I would probably, uh, this is with plumbing. Again, I would use it with plumbing. This is to hold my pipes in place. <laughs> it's similar to a plumber's tape, I guess, but not really. That this is, it's hold, it's to hold my, like I had two pipes that were side by side and I had to hold them together. So I tied them with this and then held it in, used the screws and you put the screws in it and then holds, hold, holds your pipe in So it's, it's a type of, it's called plumber's tape. So there you go. Not to be confused with that. That's a different type. That's a different type of plumber's tape. This is the fine stuff. Here's the fine, it's very thin membrane. It's, it's, uh, it's sometimes it's paper, paper thin. And sometimes it's hard for you to even get the edge. I'm gonna have trouble. This is a brand new roll. I'll probably have trouble finding the edge of that. Let's see if I can find that it's open. There we go. See, this is a very, very fine membrane. Very. And that is when you're uh, putting your, your, I just had it. My bell. Here's my bell. See, and you can even see some, they took this one off. There, it's threaded tape so that you could, oops, and you want it so it's flat. See, I already screwed that up. Can't use that when it's messed up like that. You want it when it's flat. I don't have my knife handy. There, okay, but what you, and it's tape. It's like that, um, Scotch tape, you know. Okay. So then when you what you want to do is you want to have it thread around here. And it's when you're putting on the other piece so that you get a tight, tight seal. So then you just wrap it around and you put it on here. And then when you put, especially when you're doing two different types of materials. So if I had um, plastic to metal, metal to plastic, 
you want to be able to have it uh, get a really tight seal between uh, on the on the thread. So that's what that type of tape is. All right, so I'm putting this with my plumbing stuff. I have a little box. See here? Here's a little box of all my plumbing stuff. So I am going to put my PVC pipe cutter there with that. Um, ha, here's an interesting one. Here. Let's see if I can get it open. Come on, I have to do it one more time probably. First, let's put it there. Does anybody know what that one is? Oh, in the top. Come on. What is it? Can anybody tell me what this one is? It's got a blue handle. It's metal. It's long. What is it? <laughs> Thanks for joining, Mary. <laughs> You've got me live, and I'm going through my bag of tools, my box of tools, my wall of tools. It's actually a whole wall of tools that I am trying to organize so that uh, myself and or the workers that help me, that when they come in and say, hey, Mary, where's the blah, blah, blah? I can say, hey, check in the little box, check in the big box, check along the wall. <laughs> but I need you to help me, we're playing a game. You gotta tell me if you know what the tool is. There's all sorts of funky, fun, odd tools here so let me know shout it out if you will <laughs> put it in the comments you know what this is and why do we need it You guys can tell me. Come on, join me. Play the game. Ugh. What tool is this? This is a tough one. Okay, I'll give it to you if you don't know. This too is a plumbing tool. So, what is it? Wire stripper? No, I can see where you would say that though, because that, that I do have one of those around here somewhere. We were I was using it earlier, um, but it is not. I will give you guys. <laughs> no, it's not for to cutting wires. It, this is for plumbing. It's a plumbing tool, and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of homes, apartments. Uh, lots of places uh, are moving away from having uh, just PVC uh, pipe, uh, piping. What they're getting into is a flexible. I had, when I did the kitchen remodel where I had the 40 knobs, you guys still remember the 40 knobs? That's a while ago. Because <laughs> that was a different rehab. That was a different rehab but I redid an entire kitchen. And when I did that kitchen, there uh, we had taken out the original plumbing that was there and, and the whole house was replaced with this type of plumbing. It's called PEX tubing, P-E-X, PEX tubing. Not PEX like my PEX, PEX like P-E-X. <laughs> and Shark Bite is one of the biggest uh, brand names out there for this PEX tubing, and you'll see it. It's a uh, red or blue most times. Sometimes they have some clear ones, but it's it, it's a flexible hose that you use. Well, when you get it to the metal fitting, so the the stuff goes on the goes on it, but then you have to clamp it down. So it comes with special shark bite clamps. And you put the nipple of the the clamp in the end of that, and then you ratchet it until it releases. You keep building that pressure, clamping it, clamping it, clamping it, clicking it, clicking it, clicking it, clicking it, clicking it until ah, 
you crimped it. <laughs> so then the important thing is to actually do it without crimping the why the actual you can do it so in some places there's gaskets and if you do that and you over crimp it you blow the gasket so you don't want to blow the gasket on that either because that has happened in the rv i don't know if you've seen that one i had to do a pex tubing repair and cut back some of the pex tubing because one of the gaskets had blown so and it was it, it had been installed that way uh, difficult to prove to any dealership, so they're gonna they're gonna be hands off on that. So I fixed it myself. Anyways, plumbing tool. Let's see. Um, oh, we're getting into all sorts of hanging stuff. Oh, I found more chalk. Chalk. So that's gonna go in the box with my my chalk line and tape. I have so much tape. I have so much tape. I have uh, all kinds of tape. So I have painter's tape. I'm gonna put this with the left though. I have a whole box. Oh, and here's painting. All right, I have a whole box of all this stuff. I have like this for the full barn. Now, this is rated for exterior. This will be installed. Uh, this is going to be uh, the, <laughs> this is going to be an outdoor receptacle with a waterproof cover on it. And it has, depending on whether you need it up or down for your wires, but um, it is also a GF, GFCI, so it's ground fault uh, current indicator, I think is how it is. Uh, anyways, but that it trips if there any any water gets in it. That's what's installed in your bathrooms. It interrupts. There we go. Um, not indicator, interrupter. <laughs> you can interrupt me all day long. That's no problem. Hi, Petra. Um, but it's no fun when you're trying to blow dry your hair and the, it keeps tripping. <laughs> Either again, because it could be a power surge. So if you've got too much voltage, not enough voltage, uh, whatever's going on, it interrupts the, the, uh, what's the current that's going through the uh, voltage. There we go. That's, 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 the, that's the word I was looking for, voltage. And I have all sorts of breakers in here. Again, with adding all um, new electricity. I've got 20 amps, uh, 15 amps. I get dual poles, single poles, lots of poles, poles upon poles. Anyways, uh, I also have a one, uh, we've been using these a lot, which is a one gang. Sometimes you need a two gang, but this is a one gang. And, and then sometimes there's even a three gang, but Right now, <laughs> I, I, I very rarely, but I have seen four gang too. <laughs> so, but usually, what I've been using is a one gang. So, but if you see when you walk into a into a room and you see the light switches, uh, there's and you have multiple ones. Say you have your ceiling fan that's there that has the twist thing or a slider or something of that nature but then you also have a light switch and then on that same thing you have an outdoors light switch an indoor light switch your ceiling fan your whatever depending on that is depends on how many gangs <laughs> you use in your wall so uh in the more gangs you have uh, you're gonna be stressed they're gonna have to probably sister the, your, your, your stud that it, cause all these usually go up against the stud. The bigger it gets, the heavier it gets, they probably have to sister it between your, <laughs> between, between your studs. But this sits in there and then you get your voltage, which you break out your tabs, pull your wires through it. And then you can then install your receptacle on there. And then once you install your receptacle, you can then, so for this instance, if I have this type of receptacle, I don't have the, the, um, the oh, I don't have one of those. 
Or you can use, for instance, something like that, where you have the paddle switch. So then, after that, you put your face plate up. So these are all some of the things that are in my electric box for Sparky. All right. Then, let's see. See, I told you, oftentimes, I use, like, so here, I had a whole bunch of screws that were left over. So I just, instead of a, a this one's pretty silly to use actually because it's metal against glass. If I drop it, then I'm screwed. <laughs> Literally, put the screws. But usually I uh, put it in some sort of plastic container so that uh, if, if anything happens, it uh, doesn't have an issue there. Let's see, what other tools have I got in here? Oh, this is a box. It's in the box. Yeah. No, it's not for my car. <laughs> no, it's not for, well, it is actually, but not for what you think it is. <laughs> it is just an air filter, but it is an air filter that goes with my DeWalt. So I can change out the air filter whenever I need to. Sometimes, sometimes it just gets too grody. No matter how much you shake it out and bang it, especially with all this dust, I could be banging for hours and not get all of that dust out of there. So it sometimes it's just easier to just get a new filter <laughs> than try to just keep banging it and banging it and banging it and banging it. It's, so, anyways, there we go. We have that one. Uh, oh. And another set. So now that's seven. I've come, now come across seven pairs of work gloves. And a sharp, not a sharpie, but this one's a highlighter. Depends on what you're using. Sometimes, uh, sometimes I use a sharpie. Sometimes I use a pencil, which there should be a bunch. Oh, wait, I did have a little So that is probably there. That might be a 12-ish. It probably says it on the side and I can't read it. But let's see. There it is. It says, yeah, yes. This is, should be a 12-2. So even with the 12-2, just so you guys can see this, it, it, the 12-2 goes by how many wires are in it. But just understand that even though it's 12-2, doesn't mean that it's going to have two wires. There should always be a ground wire in there. So black is going to be your power. White is going to be um, uh, neutral. And then the wire in the middle, the copper wire in the middle, is your actual ground. So black is hot, or sometimes it's called hot. So when you're wiring something up and you're looking for, and it says, hot, you need too hot, or one hot, or, you know, if depending if you're jumping it from one to another, because that's the thing is you could be on the same wire loop and you're jumping it from one to another, so you sometimes you have to put two wires in there, or more, so in your box. <laughs> sometimes you're shoving some, some wires in your box. So two wires in one box. But, um, but anyways, the, the black is your hot, so and then the white would be your cold, and then your brown is your ground. So there you go. That's that's my twelve two. So when they say that you, that you need a Romex twelve two, uh, that means that you actually don't. You know, you're not getting two wires. You're getting three wires. So a lot of what I had to channel out to the RV pad, I used six three so that actually meant it didn't have three wires it had four wires so yes i do need a manicure just so you guys know i do <laughs> i had to give stella a bath because i found some fleas on her and it that flea dip stuff is not nice to <laughs> To my nails it takes the nail polish right off so anyways all right and one of my favorites I don't have the gun that goes
goes with it. It's hanging outside. I know where it is. It's not with the tools. But I also use a lot of this around. It's a long tube of cloth. <laughs> As you can see, this one has already uh, been plugged up. It's been, the, the tip has been snipped. It has been pushed out. Now, I can still reuse this. I can re-snip the tip if need be. And that's caulk. C-A-U-L-K. So, if I caulk, <laughs> but that's not how anybody ever says it. <laughs> but this is silicone waterproof. So, these would be areas that are, are going to be wet uh, around the kitchen sink if you're putting it up uh, above your backsplash or in the bathroom, thresholds between the front door and you know anything that you have to uh, around, it's gonna get, but it has the potential to get wet. That's where you want this. Now I got clear, sometimes you get white. And then depending, you know, if you have black windows or something of that nature, uh, you know, you have that black industrial look, you can actually get black. So the, it comes clear, white, and black. I don't know if it comes in colors, but I know that it comes in clear, white, and black. All right. Oh, hey, look, I found my mini spatula. <laughs> oh, it's dirty. Oh, no, somebody did not do it. I am not happy. The last person that did this did not peel off stuff off of it. You're supposed to scrape it. Now I know it's only a dollar thing but uh, or two but I like to reuse the tools as much as I possibly can. I don't want to always have to be constantly going out and buying new spatulas or new uh, new edgers. So um so okay there there oh I have foam oh more plumbing stuff so plumbing's gotta go with plumbing That's going to go with the plumbing. These are connectors. Ooh, another. I feel like every bucket and box I go in, I find it another uh, tape measure. So it's always fun finding out what I've got in the, in the bucket and in the, the boxes. Uh, so yes, these are for underneath your faucets, bathrooms, or kitchens to connect your faucet to the water line. This uh, here is a half inch uh, fit in pipe and then uh, two three eighths. So that's going with plumbing. Oh, I got dust, so that made my nose itchy. Sorry, guys. Oof. I got some dust. All right. Hey! Boxing tape. <laughs> you know, I'm always looking for this stuff. And I always bury it in a box, and then I don't remember which box I buried it in. So I'm gonna try to leave that out. Because you never know when you gotta tape up a box. There's another. Here's a little thing. Oh, here's plumber's putty. That's a good thing. Plumber's putty. I'm gonna put that with the plumbing stuff too. This is gonna end up having some plumbing stuff in it. There you go, there's a little bit of putty in there. You can, you can work it around, mold it as you need it. Yes. So there's some. Odie is a pretty good uh, common name for plumbing. Plumber's putty. You just you, you take a small bit of it and roll it around. It, you know, use it uh, mainly on your drains. So uh, when you're putting in a new sink, for instance, the drain has... Uh, has a, that little metal thing, especially if you have a, a, a garbage disposal, it, that's where it comes in most common, uh, and, and you have that seal that, that goes around your sink. You, so you have the sink, and then you have the, the drain that goes with it, and that metal piece. What you do is you run, you, you do a little Indian, Indian rub, you do a little Indian rub, and make a long, uh, a uh, long little worm out of it, <laughs> and then you rim it, <laughs> and then you press the the drain down on top of that. 
and then that makes the tight seal between the sink and the drain. So that is going in my plumber's stuff. Now my boxes, my, my boxes stuff, my plumber's boxes is too small for all the stuff that I got in there because I've got cement and uh, cleaners and all sorts of stuff in that box. So we may have to, we may have to re reevaluate that. Um, there is so much stuff to go through. I don't even know what that is. Um, okay, I want this to be in there. Where did my spatulas go? My spatulas are down there. Sanding blocks, lots more, lots of that stuff. Okay. Two-sided tape. There's more tape. Okay, so I need a, I need a thing of tape because I've got Gorilla tape which has replaced the duct tape. I'm so sorry, duct tape. I have moved on to Gorilla. <laughs> I like Gorilla tape. Gorilla tape is super, super sticky. Uh, I mean, it's kind of, the, the duct tape is good, but I won't even be able to, I, I mean, you have to, uh, you have to, uh, to just pull that, pull that off. So I have a couple of rolls of my Gorilla tape. Uh, I have painter's tape. I have double-sided tape. Oh, wait, I found a fitting. So here inside there is your gasket. I could have shown you here with that. that. I don't want to mess it up, but that would be, it's not the right sizes, but that's where you would use your threaded. Um, I can't think of the name of it. It's not the plumber's tape, but it's not. It's called something else. Thank you so much for joining me. You got Mary live. I am going through my toolbox. I've got tool buckets, boxes. I've got tools everywhere, tools galore. And I am going through it and organizing it so that it's all kind of in the same place. Oh, and after I said that, this was not in the same place. So that needs to be over there. I've got more shims. Those need to go with the other shims. Dog toys. Oh, where did these shims come from? Hmm. I've got safety glasses. So, safety first, guys. Safety first. So, yes. Not just any glasses. I've got cool yellow ones. Da -da -da. <laughs> so, when I'm cutting something, or using something that might uh, spark, or it wouldn't be good for sparking, but uh, again, if I'm using it, even if I'm using a chainsaw or something that you might uh, have some kickback to it, always look at the glasses. There we go. Hang the glasses on the rim. Okay. This one. Oh, that's the floor patch. I got floor patch in there. I'm not sure what to do with that one. Floor patch. I guess all my tapes are going to go in with the floor patch. I might need that for the thumbnail. Oh well. There we go. Right. And this is all going to be kills. Oh, I got some on the bottom. I'm going to put on the bottom. Ring kits. Oh. Uh, these are for, you know, uh, drywall screws and if you have big hooks. I don't know what they were doing in there. I've got more wood. Lots of wood. Lots of wood. I've always had lots of wood around. And lots of dust at the moment. So the dust is going to make me itchy. Oh, wait. I found more plumbing stuff. And a Stella toy. Stella! I found a Stella toy. I found more elbows. I think the guys just go out and buy more plumbing. <laughs> All the time. And so looking to see if we have any of this plumbing stuff. Ah! And I found another chalk line. So I have not one, but two chalk lines. Okay, so two chalk lines. Ooh, that's a red one. There we go. That's red. All right. I got red and blue.
the bucket. Let's get to a bucket. I know it looks like I'm making a mess. I'm actually organizing it. I know it's hard to tell. Hard to tell. But let's see what I got in the box in the big bucket. Stella. I'm gonna roll it to you, Stella. And another Stella. We're gonna put that in the bucket. And this this should not be in the bucket for any home, RV, car, anything that you are uh, doing work on, or even for the kitchen. It's very important to have a fire extinguisher. Sometimes it just gets You, I know you like it hot. I love it hot, but sometimes it gets too hot. And most of these, this is, um, I can't read the rating, but I usually get it so that it is good for um, everything, anything uh, from a wood fire to a grease fire to an electrical fire. So those are the things that I'm concerned with. Um, I, you know, so that's, those are the, the, that's the type of rating that I would normally get uh, for any uh, uh, fire extinguisher. It is good. It's got the, it's pressure, it's pin is in, it is locked. This one has not been uh, used. So I am going to make sure that this is by the back door. <laughs> I do like to keep them handy uh, just in case. You never know. Uh, there, I did have a breaker that started to melt. If I had waited any longer, I'm like, why do I smell plastic burning? It wasn't the, uh, the, the dishwashers, because sometimes you know how you put something in the dishwasher and it falls down onto the element, and when you're in the dry cycle, it smells like burnt plastic, it's because you dropped your spatula down in there with, with the water pressure. Well, uh, not a similar smell, but I, I could tell that this had a lot more to it. And the smoke detector, which was right over the head, uh, over above it, wasn't going off, but I could smell that plastic burning. And it was a breaker that was melting. So I did happen to catch it in time before it broke out into a fire. But had it broken out into a fire, I probably would have had to use my fire extinguisher. So keep your fire extinguisher handy. Safety first, guys. Safety first. All right, so I believe I've got through, oh, well, everybody should know what that one is. I can look at you too. <laughs> Something I, I, I do use this, I used it on the island, not this particular one because this one seems fresh. So that's going to go with the painting stuff. Painting, painting, painting. Uh, well, I've got rollers in here. I've got more painting stuff. So, so you know, lots of rollers. <laughs> and I like it. This is a, 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 a different nap on it. It depends on the cushion, the cushion of the, the thickness and the, the actual cushion of your, of your um, paint roller when it goes on. There you go. Oh, there's more wood in here. I have wood everywhere. This is a wider plank. This is a wider plank than the others. See, this is a standard two by four here, and this is apparently a one by, not a one by six. But anyways, I can't read the label. It's got too much goo on it. <laughs> got too much Alabama. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stack my wood. I like to stack my wood. <laughs> Make it as thick as possible and as tall as possible. Uh, all right, uh, what else do I got in here? Oh, there's some plastic down the bottom. Oh, more plumbing. This is a bigger elbow. I got a big elbow. <sighs> all right, guys, it's getting time for me to have a little snack. Yes, I need to go make some dinner now. 
Now that I've got all my tools out, I'm going to have to go put them away and play. But thank you for joining me this evening. <laughs> it's been fun while we played What Tool Is This? <laughs> and playing with Mary's Toolbox. Uh, I hope you, you guys are following me. If you don't, what, 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 why not? It's always something fun happening here on the farm or during my travels. I'm always up to something new. And you should stay tuned because I have a brand new project that I'm going to start working on, which is my workout shed. And you'll get to see the entire thing start to finish. Uh, the, the, the shell has been delivered, but it's at, down to the studs and the subfloor on the inside. So you've got... So you've got lots and lots and lots of stuff. I will be running. I'll you know, be running whips of, of Romex so that I can have uh, power in there. There'll be a bathroom, so there'll be some plumbing in there as well. I am hoping to use PEX tubing in there. There's no reason to not use that PEX tubing. Uh, it will have a small shower, a, a small little sink, Probably two small little sinks, one inside the bathroom and one outside the bathroom, and a uh, toilet inside. And then I'm also hoping to do an outdoor shower. Whoa! I knew I wasn't going to be able to juggle that elbow for very long. Uh, and hoping to do an outside shower as well as a combination of the wash station. Or anytime. You, the, uh, things get so mucky around the farm, sometimes you just want to hose off. <laughs> so, that'll be a great place to hose off. Uh, and it is also going to be kind of a tiny house build. So you've seen all that tiny house stuff going on. Well, this will be a combination because when it's not a workout shed, it'll be a place to kind of chill, relax, and or have a guest stay overnight. So, there you go. All right. Now, it is... I'll be the same. Sayonara. Ciao. Uh, again, the new <laughs> uh, Bono Sera. <laughs> I, those, I, those are all just goodbyes. I don't know how to say any of anything else in any of those languages. <laughs> Adios. So, it, <laughs> yeah, it is time for me to go, but I will be back. I will be back again. I'll come up with something else that we can do together. But I thank you for joining me this evening as we had so much fun playing Name That Tool. <laughs> what does that tool use for? Uh, but I'll be back again. So have a great night. Thank you for joining me. Make it with Mary. You had me live. You got the right account. So follow me. If you don't follow the fakes, please don't follow the fakes. Don't get faked by the fakes. Don't get tricked. Follow the real Mary Rock. All right. Talk to you soon, guys. Oh, oops, I have to lean over the box. I have to lean over to say goodnight. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Good night, guys. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. And if they do, hit them with a the shoe. If you miss, give them a kiss. Good night.